Anime has reached a point where we no longer care too much about if people are getting punched in the face or if they are flying sex robots. Slice of life anime takes getting used to in a lot of cases because it's just everyday people doing everyday things. But sometimes I see it as us living our lives by watching a drawing of someone depicting what they want life to be. But if there's anything that can bring in a new audience or resonate with people, it's cute girls and music. We've had Carolyn and Tuesday blow our minds with one of the best musical performances ever seen in anime. And Healer Girl was melodic enough to always calm me down, but I think the show can top it. This is a coming of age story about a socially awkward high school girl who fell in love with the idea of having a band and learned to play the guitar. But the thing about that combo is you need to be able to interact with people to form a band. And in comes Nijika who also wants to find band members and unlike Hitori, she's very outgoing. So yeah, Hitori joins the band. Well, no shit. Bochi the Rock came at the best time for me because somehow, this season, I'm way more open to giving shows an honest watch. Probably because I enjoy Licorice Recoil so much, I'm more inclined towards the cute girls doing hype things genre, so that clip that was circulating around could not have come at a better time. I saw that clip and I was like, wait, what the hell? So yeah, instead of doing work, I watched it and caught up the same day. But then I quickly realized that I was drawn in by the musical clip that I watched, but I stayed for something else. I stayed for the comedy, for the jokes that flew by so fast it felt like I was watching Psyche K again, for the creativity, and for the characters, and yeah, also the music. I mean when I say I was not expecting this show to be as good as it was, so much that it felt like I was watching, well, animation. I know that doesn't make much sense, but what comes to your mind when you think of animation? Over the top reactions, crazy coincidences, visual representations of analogies and metaphors, or maybe it's the expressiveness and the feeling of the animators being able to show anything they want. I end up being reminded of when the Family Guy side gags were good when I watched this show and it is somehow able to fit in seamlessly. You could be watching an episode and for a gag, the entire animation style changes to match the 1995 style with Yu Yu Hakusho style type flames. And it makes it unique because sometimes you watch an anime that feels like it's off the Walmart shelves. Mass produced. And other times you watch an anime like Ranking of Kings, keep your hands off Azuken on this, and you can feel the connection that everyone in production had with this show. With every gag bit or musical number you think, they didn't really have to do that. But the fact that they did, and did it well, just makes it better. So naturally I did what everyone does when they see an anime they like and see if it's an original or has a manga. And I found out that it's not an anime original, but an adaptation of a manga, and every time I try to imagine myself reading a musical manga, I feel like it's too hard for me. You can tell I never read Beck or Given in the shows, maybe one day. However, since this is more of a comedy slice of life, I can see it working as a normal manga too, but it's not a normal manga, it's in a Yonkoma style. That is a manga that's split up into series of 4 panels that are usually used in gag type mangas, and I found out the hard way because I read the usual right to left way we normally do and realized things were missing. Turns out you read this one downwards. Not a chore, but you definitely miss out on the personality that the regular style has. Which is also why the anime is so amazing because it fills in the moments excellently. I guess maybe that should be obvious because anything that adapts an original work should ultimately strive to be better while also keeping the strong points of the original. More people are definitely going to try to read the manga since it's only like 30 chapters, but they may end up heavily preferring the anime version, I know I do. It's because anime is beautiful when produced well, there's no medium that tops it in my opinion. Everything on that black and white page is brought to life and there are little nuances that you only notice when things are animated. All the more from music based manga that's really about a girl overcoming her troubles to join a band. The whole joining a band thing is something that just had to happen, but what it does do is show how well the anime excels at character. The main cast includes an overdramatic socially awkward girl who wants to be a star, an extroverted graphic design master who wants to be rich, a rich mooch, and an overexcited instagrammer who's in love with her senior. When you put all these characters in a room, there's so many weird ways a conversation will go that you would not expect it to. Even when they make jokes about culture that you may not understand, what we see visually can bring out a chuckle or maybe even a hee hee. <laughs> It's always a hard thing to have to talk to people about comedy because it feels like when you start trying to explain a joke or a money moment, they just look at you like you're a little insane. Either that or they don't find it funny at all. But trust me, okay? Bochi the Rock is funny as hell. I was talking earlier about how creative the animation was and it's also one main aspect that adds to the comedy. 
well that and the voice acting. Imagine you're watching this lighthearted show and suddenly she gets cyber psychosis. <laughs> In the scene where the girls go to Hitori's home to design a band shirt that they can start wearing for shows and eventually sell as merch, Hitori ends up showing the clothes that her mom buys for her and everyone talks about how cute she is. Then Nijika gets a nice idea to brush back her bangs, which may seem like a normal thing to do, but as soon as she does that, Hitori just starts disintegrating and turning into ash due to stress. Later on, all the girls pass out when their parents walk in to bring dessert to seemingly dead girls. That's a gag bit that went on for almost 2 minutes, but I just had to- wait. I just did it. I just tried to explain the joke. Doesn't matter, Mother's Basement will probably do a 45 minute video soon on one of the jokes, so it's not that bad. The title of the story was not clickbait and actually implies music and the rock genre. However, I feel music is mainly there for the plot. It's not a musical show with every episode giving us a hack musical number or a guitar riff, but what it does is use music to show progression. Goto is a girl who suffers from severe social anxiety, and the way we see her try to overcome it is mainly through her performances and bandmates. What's interesting is that she's an amazing guitarist in her closet. And since her goal is to become famous and have fans, she needs to be able to show that skill to others, well, on stage. She starts out by playing in a literal box till they're told they suck and they end up getting jobs and getting in situations that bring her close to death. But it helps her in the long run because she's starting to find people she can rely on now so she doesn't feel so alone. Take that scene from episode 8. Up until then, she had never really played her best, but the pressure from needing to do well caused the whole team to tank the first performance, and from there she made a conscious effort to not let things stay the way they are. She had a solo that brought a tear to my eye because I realized how hard that must have been, and it was a great way of showing how different she was from when she first started. There were moments that had the CG looking sketchy to me, but only because of the amazing stuff they had been shown prior. But maybe, just maybe, there's some thematic relevance that I'm missing, but as long as your CG looks better than the spider isekai, I'm, I'm good. This show is the definition of a sleeper hit though because for it to make any amount of noise considering the sheer powerhouses that are currently airing this season is crazy, and for it to talk some charts over set powerhouses might be even crazier. Who'd have thought that in a world where Bleach made a return, Chainsaw Man, Mob Psycho, and Blue Lock were airing, that the shows that people would peg as anime of the year would be the one with a socially anxious guitar hero. Well that's it for the video guys, if you're still here, thank you so much for staying to the end and if you want to see more of my videos, please click one of these as it helps the channel out a lot. Thank you again and I'll see you next time. Peace.